Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the overhand. Now the overhand gets a lot of shit because people think it's not very technical, they think it's sloppy, and they think it's the mark of a brawler. Today we're going to dispel some of those myths, we're going to talk about the proper mechanics for an overhand right, and we're going to touch on some of the applications of one. So first, let's understand the value of an overhand right, and that is its trajectory and its arc. Whereas a traditional right straight comes straight down the middle, an overhand right comes around and then over the top. The application for this is to clear the opponent's lead hand and lead shoulder. So imagine someone in their stance, whether the lead hand's tight to their face or whether it's extending somewhere in the motion of a jab, a right straight is going to be deflected by that because this hand's going to occupy that line. An overhand right is going to be able to arc around that. So that's where the application of the value of an overhand is going to come in. Now let's talk about the lower body mechanics to get that proper arc with, with balance and with power. It's very similar to a right straight where you need to start with your weight on the back foot. Try to start with your weight on the front foot and throw into it, you're going to be way off balance, right? If I'm leaning forward and I try to throw an overhand, I'm just going to be sloppy and ugly. So I need to load up my weight on my back foot, whether I do this with a slip, whether I do this while I'm jabbing, you know, whether I do this with just a feint, doesn't really matter. I need to get the weight there somehow. Two, I need to point my knees apart. If I try to throw it with my knees already internally rotated, it's going to be absolutely awful. An overhand right requires good external rotation. You may even need to step out with this lead foot a little bit, not too much, don't make it obvious, just a little step that could be covered by a jab in order to get your hips room to open up and drive all the way through. Now, it's uh, similar to the right straight in that it needs weight transfer to the front foot and rotation but it also needs to uh, change the angle of your shoulders. It needs more sit down and flexion on the lead hip to get that. So whereas with the right straight, the cue I gave was to pull the lead shoulder back. On this one, we're gonna pull the lead shoulder back and down. Watch it. Notice the angle of my shoulder changing from relatively, from relatively level to arcing down, right? Like that. What this is doing is getting my shoulders on a tilt so that as they rotate, this is the axis they rotate on. So if I relax this right arm, it wants to swing around and come over the top because that's the angle my shoulders are rotating on. So again, it's that, that pull down of the lead shoulder and then we're going to clean it up. The overhand gets a bad reputation because people like to look down, duck, and windmill it. It doesn't need to be a punch like that. It can be a very tight punch where you just arc it over just a little bit. It's, it's almost very, very similar to the right straight, except for at the end, you sit down a little more on the lead foot and, and, and you turn that elbow over just at the end. Now, it can be thrown nice and short range too. I was throwing it long there. You can throw it right in somebody's face and come over the top with it. It, it can be thrown at any different range. What's important is that you get the proper weight shift, you sit down and lead it properly, and then you get that nice arc to it. Okay? So let's talk about some of the applications for it. One of the most obvious and most effective is just to come over the top of somebody's jab. So you, you're going to use an inside slip and then just throw the overhand right over the top of their punch. It's one of the most effective knockout punches in all, in all of combat sports. You know, uh, they call it the classic cross counter. Boom, over the top of the jab. Or maybe more short range, boom, over the top of the jab. Uh, it can be used to catch a guy who's pulling back out of range. This is great for you shorter guys out there. When a guy likes to lean back and pull back and everything he does, it's kind of similar to when you catch a guy ducking into an uppercut. You catch him pulling back into the arc of the overhand and catch him right on the jaw with that. I like to set that up with a body jab. So I, I know a guy leaning back. When I faint, I faint the body jab, then I just boom, swing that overhand over the top and catch him, catch him leaning back off balance. Uh, another application, it doesn't have to always be a knockout punch. You can use it to enter into a, a clinch or enter into a takedown attempt, like uh, Randy Couture and Fedor used to do. So when I throw this punch from here, with my weight loaded up over the front foot and this hand extended, I'm in a good position to step through with the right foot and swim through with the right hand, right? Step through, swim through into an underhook position here. Um, from there, Fedor would like to go to his body locks and just toss people. You can also use it to transition to a single leg grip down here. All different applications, so it can be used as a counter punch, it can be used to lead and catch a guy pulling out of range, it can be used as a setup to your grappling techniques. It's a super versatile punch and everyone should have it in their arsenal.